El problema de la obesidad the problem of obesity and overweight in general is an epidemic spread throughout the world that didn't have permanent solution up until 1960. Let's define the concept of calorie balance, which is what was spread on a worldwide scale. If a person spends fewer calories than what is received by the nutrients swallowed, the surplus that isn't spent turns into fat, and in the case of an adult who no longer grows, that growth will always be in all directions but up, meaning the person puts on weight. In our opinion, this concept began to be refuted starting in 1960. I thought it was very silly and naive, based initially on deductive observations and later on, starting in 1980, the advances of biochemistry and experimentation came to verify that these doubts were founded. What is the conceptual aspect that I refuted as being silly and naive? Questions like, why do some thin people eat all that we can imagine is fattening, hardly practice any sports, and never put on any weight? The second thought that I had in mind in those days, if we observe the natural ecosystem, we cannot find any obese species, not among the herbivores, the carnivores, the omnivores, nor among the little birds in the countryside. Another idea we had and made us doubt, why do humans have 8.5 meters of alimentary canal, or digestive tube, which begins in the mouth and ends in the anus. Is it possible that nature has given us eight and a half passive meters aimed at absorbing what we swallow, so we can later go to the bathroom? It didn't seem very convincing in those years. Also, active functions. If we take a cultivation of a normal person, of the pharynx, the rhinopharynx, of the nose or throat, we will always find in the cultivation aggressive germs, streptococcus, staphylococcus, narceria catarali, even colibacillum. And why if a person accidentally bites his tongue or cheek when eating and exposes his mouth to the existing aggressive germs, they never put on band-aids inside the mouth as they would do in other places and wake up the next day completely healthy? Then, all these ideas and deductions made me think of the possibility that the alimentary canal might be a key active organ, and that for some reason we put it in a passive mode. Then, since 1960, we gradually started to think about this, as I said, but I had to wait another 20 years until 1980 so that biochemistry would confirm what we required. 